Does the best Mac eGPU come from a company that doesn't traditionally make Mac hardware? Hands-on with the Razer Core X. How's it going guys? Jeff Benjamin with the 9to5Mac. This right here is the Razer Core X unboxing. See the Thunderbolt logo there. Otherwise a very unassuming package. On the side you get some details about what's inside. But other than that, there's not a lot of advertising as to what's inside this box. But we know it's the Razer Core X eGPU, something that was just announced and released this week from Razer. Now, of course, Razer's best known for its PC hardware and gaming peripherals. It's really a gaming focused company, but I have a lot of respect for Razer. I've always kind of watched them because to me, they're one of the few PC makers that really puts that emphasis on design that Mac users are used to seeing. Now I have to admit, I wasn't expecting a lot from the Razer Core X because of its budget friendly $299 price because if you compare it with other eGPU units, it's on the lower end of the price scale. But I have been pleasantly surprised. The design is actually really good. This little panel right here is plastic. You can't tell unless you touch it, but that panel is plastic. The rest of the unit's outside chassis is metal, however. On this side, you get a little mesh window with the Razer logo, not exactly inconspicuous, but at least there's no RGB lighting or anything like that. The top is plain and the bottom actually is very interesting because it has that huge non-slip pad and that comes in handy. I'll show you why that is in a second. So on the back, you have air vents, the PCIe expansion slot cover. You have a single Thunderbolt 3 port. And interestingly enough, you actually have a power switch. A lot of the eGPUs don't have power switches. They just power on automatically once it detects Thunderbolt connectivity. And of course you have your power port as well. Now this handle actually isn't a handle at all. It's a quick release lever that allows you to easily remove the inner chassis from the outer chassis just like that. No tools required. That is truly a, a wonderful design. Uh, it really shows the thoughtfulness that Razer put into the design. I love that aspect of this eGPU. And you see how moving that lever manipulates the pin locking mechanism so that you can lock and unlock the inner chassis from the outer shell. You see that little pin there? That's what it locks around. And coming from someone that has used a lot of very awkward eGPU chassis, this is a huge time saver. So let's remove the inner portion of the Razer Core X. You'll need to remove the GPU sizing guide. This helps you to determine whether or not your GPU will fit inside. Chances are it will because it's a very large three slot wide full length enclosure. You can see the Thunderbolt 3 controller board here with the PCIe port. And another aspect of the Core X's design that I appreciate is the PCIe slot cover featuring a single plate design that covers both slots and a single thumb screw for toolless installation. There's also a 650 watt ATX power supply inside and that power supply is upgradable should you ever need to do so in the future. You get two 6 plus 2 pin connectors for power and there's a fan to help keep things cool and this can be upgraded as well. Now the thing that makes the quick release lever really work is this little rail system. This rail system attaches to this little plastic piece inside the outer chassis. And this plastic piece prevents metal from rubbing against metal. So there's no screeching when you insert or remove the inner chassis. There's way less friction. It allows you to easily insert or remove your GPU with just a single hand. And that non-slip pad on the bottom of the unit that I mentioned earlier, that really helps out with the whole mechanism, keeping it firm on the desk, allowing you to slide out the inner portion just like that. Now the GPU sizing guide is there to just to help you uh, make sure that the GPU that you wanna use will fit inside. Like I said, chances are it will. Uh, there's a lot of room inside and this Radeon RX Vega 64, which is the most powerful officially supported GPU for the Mac fits in perfectly fine. So we'll just connect both six plus two power connectors. You'll notice that Razer also includes some cable management Velcro to keep things nice and tidy. So really installing a GPU inside of the Razer Core is extremely easy, straightforward, doesn't take a lot of time at all. Completely toolless installation and there it is. So it just slides in like this thanks to that rail system and the quick release lever, super easy. Doesn't get any easier than that. So now it's time to see what's inside the accessory pack box. So you get a power cable, not super long, but I guess it's long enough. All right, and then 
You also get some documentation for support. And the Core X documentation is actually very verbose. I was impressed by how detailed the documentation was. You also get some stickers, which is, of course, a very familiar sight for all you Apple heads out there. And you get a 0.5 meter Thunderbolt 3 cable, but I highly, highly recommend that you opt for a two meter long active Thunderbolt 3 cable. This will set you back a few coins, but you get much more length. You even get a blacked out Thunderbolt 3 logo. I haven't seen that before. That's pretty cool. Uh, but definitely you want a two meter long Thunderbolt 3 cable. It needs to be an active cable. Keep that in mind. So now let's go ahead and connect our monitor. The display port connects directly to the GPU. And there is our Thunderbolt 3 cable, and that will connect to our Mac. And I'm using a 13 inch 2017 MacBook Pro. This is the base model. So it has the Intel Iris Plus graphics 640 inside integrated GPU. So it's basically worthless for gaming. That is for any sort of really intense gaming. That thing is just not going to fly. Uh, so an external GPU really comes in handy if you're a gamer. You can see it's connected there. This is a 4K display running at 60 Hertz connected to that Radeon RX Vega 64 inside of the Core X. So now let's run some benchmarks. Go to run the Heaven benchmark. You can see it's already at about 60 frames per second. This is with two times anti-aliasing ultra settings, tessellation at moderate 1080p resolution. All right, I'm not gonna let you sit through all these benchmarks. We're just going to chart the data and I'm going to present to you what the results are. So you can see on that heaven benchmark, I got about 68 frames per second average. Here is the chart comparing it to the Intel Iris inside of my MacBook Pro. You can see it just demolishes, not even close. OpenGL test here, and you can see the OpenCL test, even more obvious how much that external GPU helps out. However, I will say this, that the Mac still could probably benefit from some optimization driver-wise. Obviously, eGPU support is new with Mac OS 10.13.4, but you can see it is officially supported there. There's the Radeon RX Vega 64, running at 1080p, pixel doubled, so this is 4K at 60 hertz. And like I said, it provides full power delivery up to 100 watts here with the MacBook Pro 13. It only needs 60, so it's at full 60 watts power. All right, so disconnecting your eGPU is as easy as going up to the menu bar, clicking where it says disconnect, and then we can simply unplug just like that. So ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, the Razer Core X is the best external GPU for the Mac. It features a 650 watt power supply, extremely well thought out design, and it's large enough to fit the largest cards. All that for only $299? It's a no brainer in my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.